Welcome back. We're going to do the single leg uh, step down and single leg step up. Uh, this is uh, going to be the proper position for the step down, a great effective tool to work on balance and stability, but it also is a great tool for an assessment, and we'll cover that, what you're going to look for for dysfunction, what you're going to look for for proper movement. All right, Nate, so we're going to go ahead and start with a, uh, in an up position, so you're always going to start here, find their balance, okay, and your command is to, to slowly lower down until you touch your heel, and then we turn back up. There you go, and then come back up. What I want you to do, Nate, I want you to touch that heel like this is all water, and you're just making a ripple, okay? You're not going to transfer any weight. Good, and you turn up, and you're not going to touch the foot back to support. Let's go again. This is all balance, all single leg balance, and up. Good. Hip, posterior hip shift. Go ahead. Up there, do you find that balance? Touch and come back up. Don't wake that foot now. We'll give you one more chance. Here we go. Touch and up. There you go. Down again. The slower you go, the harder it is. Good. And one more time. Perfect. Excellent job. And you can rest right here. Alright, so from a dysfunctional standpoint, or from, from a functional standpoint, proper position, you want to have that knee in line with your foot line with uh, their foot and their head. You don't want to deviate. If you see this happen, okay, that's a bad angle of the knee, a lot of stress on the knee, the hip comes out to find uh, more stability, and there's probably a hip problem along with lack of support in the foot where you go into hyperpronation. So it goes right back to that short foot position where your big toes press down, Foot's in a neutral position, weight on the other aspect of the heel, so the knee can track the sagittal plane, flexion and extension, and the hip is going to go through flexion and extension and eliminate or try to control ab uh, ab abduction or frontal plane movement of the hip. We'll have to go, Nate, to uh, step down laterally. Face that way. All right, so from a lateral uh, standpoint, we can actually uh, incorporate some of our uh, triangulations. So I'll have you start up in the top position. All right, and I'm going to command a foot posterior foot reach, heel touch. Go ahead and drop your foot down, heel touch, and come back up. Now that's going to drive more uh, hip, hip motion into flexion. Again, that friends in if we talk about the glutes being the front. Go ahead and do that again for me. Good hip flexion, minimal knee involvement. Of course, the knee is still involved. All integrated movements going to involve it, but a little less. A little less dorsiflexion involved. Come back up. Now, as we go to a lateral step down along the lateral vector, in this case, it's going to be uh, heel touch at R90, because this is the right side. It's going to touch on that vector. Try to pose this underneath this foot. All right, go ahead and drop down. Heel touch. Now he's forced to go into more knee flexion, anterior excursion of the knee, and dorsiflexion. Still hip involving the hip. Come back up. Give me another step. Rules apply. As we saw straight on, the knee has to track right in line with the foot and then the hip. And then it looks great. Come back up. Spinal alignment. Very important, obviously. Go ahead and drop down again. Good. We want to make sure that this does not happen flexing from the spine, initiating from the spine to get back up. We want to move through the lower chain. Come back up. Good. Now, they give you an anterior uh, heel touch. Just forward. There you go. Obviously, much, much tougher. More excursion of the knee. Greater knee flexion. Greater dorsiflexion. Hip still involved. Still the spinal curves. We come back up. Much tougher, isn't it? All right. That's going to emphasize more the quadricep. But you got to make sure that the, the ankle has enough motion to do that. And obviously, a, another vertical tweak is how high they're going to step down. They can start from one inch to on up to a bench. Okay, so that's another tweak of our, our verticality. All right, you can step down. We're going to kneel over the bench here. All right, and he's going to go to the step up here. The, Almost identical uh, exercise to put on here for me. It's just now we have a greater uh, vertical component. Solid heel, on the bench. Solid heel on the bench, you got it. Now on this one here, the alignment still applies, the spine still applies. What you're going to do is try to uh, 
uh, come up on a fixed knee. So you're going to raise yourself up over a fixed knee. Good, good. And bring this leg right up to 90. Lock this step in. Good, squeeze that glute. So we're going nice and tall, vertical alignment. Knees locked, glutes tight. Good. And then step back down to a toe touch position and then come back up. Now this is what, what difference is. You're going to have a little rest period down here so we can actually load weight here or on our sides or a barbell on the back. More strength component of uh, the center. The eccentric component of coming down, we're going to come up again. And then come, come down. Yeah, you see how his hip kind of kicked out a little bit? That's kind of the stuff we're going to be looking for for stability. But now as it comes down, the eccentric component is still very important. But we're going to give him a level rest at the bottom so he can actually load up a little bit more. From, a, uh, from an assessment standpoint, we're still going to look at the same components, all this stuff. Whether they have ankle motion, whether they can get through that. Come up again. Now, the other thing to look at is as he's in single leg stance, we want to see if he has uh, a hip strength issue here that doesn't allow him to support vertically. So we want to be right up. Again, hip, knee, and ankle alignment. Once that hip falls outside the knee, you can see that's a bad angle, and he hyperpronates and that will cause a little torsion of his knee also. So another thing to look out with the step on. Spine mechanics, make sure they're nice and straight, they're moving through the hips, and moving through the heat, knee and ankle, and the sagittal plane, along with the hip. So that's your step up, step down, assessment, proper technique.